Hey, Robert French, French's Farms. I want to thank uh, Ken uh, Picota at uh, NCSU for uh, giving me these uh, these Purple Majesty sweet potato plants, which I planted uh, about the middle of, of uh, June. And uh, these are the ones that uh, have more uh, pro cyanidins than uh, any other sweet potato. They're very purple. I don't know if you can see it. We'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Um, I do still dig mine by hand, and that is because uh, they will stay perfectly good for a year, and I do not have to worry about uh, rotting potatoes in the middle of a pile that I have to sort through. They'll be perfectly good in a year. And uh, so I do dig them by hand like this. And uh, these uh, potatoes uh, are free of disease. They have no wireworm damage. I have about uh, less than 5% of them have been uh, chewed on by mice. And uh, they're big. Got some size to them, and um, they're supposed to taste like blueberries. And uh, we had a frost last night, or, or we had actually a hard freeze. It got down to uh, 24 degrees, and that was uh, October the 19th. These were planted, little plants. Um, they were cuttings. Uh, there was nothing uh, above ground. Uh, there were no roots. We don't do that because uh, uh, most of your disease is transferred by the soil. These these uh, potatoes are absolutely free of disease. I've had I've had a couple of rotten potatoes because this is a really wet location, but. Uh, Practically nothing. Practically no rotten potatoes, no wireworm damage. Uh, they look really nice, and uh, I think it's because of the uh, the fact that uh, we we got the cuttings uh, from above ground. You cut them at least an inch above the ground, and then you plant them, and they. Uh, they root. So, um, now these, these are very, very dark inside. Right now they've got a lot of sap running in them. So if I were to cut one open, all you'd see is that white, the white sap. But if you allow these to cure and cut them open, they are just as dark purple, solid dark purple as can be. There's no white mixed in with them. And, uh, I've got to dig these uh, by tonight because we're getting down to 24 degrees again. And I don't want any cold damage. like pulling teeth. You just kind of wiggle it and uh, pull. It's just like pulling teeth. So, um, yeah, that's it. And uh, so uh, this is what came up today. Uh, we're going to show them, uh, we're going to brush one off here in Of it. And then, 
now you'll see how pretty and purple these things are. And you get this dirt off of them. So right now they just look like the color of the dirt. So, uh, see, I mean they're they're nice, uh, very good size. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, if Ken uh, uh, bred them to be like that, but. Uh, That's, uh, let's see, there was one that was busted open. I'll, I'll bust one of them open and just show you what they look like inside. Although, um, I think what's going to happen is that the, uh, all that white is going to, uh, come up. And you just take it, take a quick look at this because the white's going to bleed out so fast. Just look. See, that's what they look like inside, and uh, can't can't smell the blueberry. Can you smell the blueberry? No. Well, okay. Smell it in there. All right. <clears throat> well, they need to cure, uh, and uh, so uh, that's it. Um, we can we can dig up a uh, let's dig a. a a Monaco over here. And compare them a little bit. This is a Monaco, and I'm still digging these. These are, these are utterly delicious. We've been eating uh, these here. These are the bush type uh, potatoes. They uh, those 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 just uh, uh, disengaged. Very very difficult. For those to disengage but this is this is the monaco and uh, they are a really really delicious sweet potato they don't use these uh, the commercial growers that harvest them with chains and mechanical equipment don't grow them because see there's your vole damage i do have some vole damage here more so and i have wireworm damage although this doesn't look like we've got wireworm damage um, but when I pull them by hand like this, uh, I, I, these, I've got potatoes from last year. Look at that thing growing out of the side of the hill. Um, I've got potatoes from last year that are still, Henry, they're better a year after they were harvested than they were three months after they were harvested. So we've got a food shortage coming up in the United States of America. We've got droughts all over the place, and to make matters worse, I mean, even in here, here in North Carolina, our corn crop wasn't very good this year. Normally, the corn averages 10 feet tall. This year, it averaged. See, there's your, there's your vole damage again. Um, but still, I mean, you know, I'm still getting so many of these things that uh, and people love them. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that I started my own plants this year and started them early. Um, I think it's going to make a huge difference. These were planted in mid-May and they got all that sunlight uh, in May and June when they were growing. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, that's basically your Monaco, and, and it's just like it's just like pulling up teeth. It's not hard to get these up. I just have to get up as many as I can because uh, we're going to get down to 24 degrees tonight, and uh, this ground is uh, is not frozen, but I don't know about two nights. Um, that's it. I mean, that's the update on the uh, Monaco and and the uh, the Purple Majesty. And uh, so, can you take a quick look at my collars, Henry. Let's see, see my collars. I grew these collars this year, and I started started them in deep pots. And uh, so the pots were eight inches deep by three by three, and it made a huge difference. I did it last year. And the deeper these collars root, um, the better they stay all summer. So normally these would not be edible 
by June, July, and all that. But I was eating these in July, and um, they just did fantastic. The survival rate was much higher. So I'm experimenting with deep root um, collard greens, and I'm going to see whether they will grow perennially um, all winter long, all summer long, and uh, you just keep eating them. The moringa did fantastic. Henry, while we're walking up to the uh, food you for seven, I want to talk about moringa. Moringa, I've developed a salad dressing where you take um, uh, onion grass. I guess you can't see it anywhere, but it's the it's the, the top from onion. And you put it in a blender with some water. And you add some tomato powder. And, uh, then you pour that, you just take the moringa fresh and uh, just, you know, you, you harvest it. The fresher you harvest it, the better it is. But that stuff, I mean, it's utterly fantastic. I, uh, I, have, to, I have to wear eyeglasses. I, took, I just went to my eye doctor and my right eye is normal now. He, he had to put a plano lens in the, uh, in the eyeglass frames because I can see better than I can with my eye, you know, kind of like Spider-Man. I can see better without my glasses than with my glasses now. And uh, I've still got a, a stigma in my left eye, so I still have to have glasses for that. And here's the moringa. We got down to 24 degrees. And you can see, I mean, it was not hurt at all. And, uh, man, that's that's the good stuff, man. I mean, you know, my hands are dirty as hell, but I I'm going to have to... There's a lot of videos on YouTube.